Hey, it's Kat here, and recently I've been musing over the upcoming ingress of Mercury into Scorpio and what it will bring. What does it mean for Mercury to enter Mars' watery domicile of Scorpio, the sign that embodies the season of autumn? In this video, I'll be sharing with you what you can expect from this upcoming transit, and I'll be going through each rising sign and sharing the life areas you might expect to see this transit show itself. So Mercury is now entering the sign of Scorpio, and it's a really interesting place for Mercury to be, I think. Uh, Mercury is peregrine in Scorpio, meaning that it doesn't have any essential dignity there, but neither is it debilitated or fallen or anything. It's kind of just a neutral place for Mercury. Uh, but I do have quite a soft spot for Mercury-Mars combinations, and that's because the two planets represent Oh, and I say, why is this a Mars combination? Well, that's because Mars rules the sign of Scorpio uh, in traditional astrology. Anyway, so what we've got is Mercury in Mars' temple. I think that's quite a happy place for Mercury to be because uh, one side of Mercury is that it is the planet who, that helps us kind of, um, it debates. It, it doesn't necessarily agree to things. I think of it as kind of like the skeptic versus Jupiter's seeker. Um, it's this idea that Mercury is not the planet that, that wants to join things up. It kind of wants to make us think about multiple options. It's the multiplicity versus kind of oneness. Similarly, Mars has this ability to cut and separate and sever. And while they're not the same in any way, there, there is a similarity there between this kind of argumentative quality of Mercury, the kind of uh, dispute that Mercury can bring up, and Mars's tendency to kind of separate. Fundamentally, Mars and Mercury both speak on some level to the ability to remove or to cut away. Mercury through a form of kind of judgment, uh, this ability to discern what is useful, what is factual, what is true. And Mars, just based on the pure instinct of um, you know, needing to conquest and needing to remove things in order to kind of have something else effectively. Either way, a combination of Mars and Mercury is very, very careful cutting or very, very careful, um, well-judged removal of things. Um, you know, think about like surgeons and editors, uh, this ability to um, judge what needs to stay and what needs to go. So anyway, this year, Mercury is in Scorpio between uh, the 22nd of October and the 10th of November. If you want to review last Mercury in Scorpio season, which I highly recommend doing if you keep a journal or if you have a really good memory, I do not, I have to rely on journals, uh, you can look back to around this time last year, specifically October 29th to November 17th, and you know get a feel for how this Mercury Scorpio transit shows up for you. I will also be going through uh, the rising signs at the end of this video so you can get an even, um, you know, if, if, you, if you want a kind of cheat sheet to, to what you can expect. So now let's take a look at some of the themes you might expect while Mercury is in Scorpio. These are just some of the uh, ways that mercurial things are going to be showing itself um, over the next few weeks. So my first theme here is mental control, um, which is really great if you're somebody who is, you know, it can be anything from just the ability to focus in on something, and that's helpful if you're um, if you're a, like a meditator or you're somebody who likes to try to kind of... Um, I'm not going to say like control the mind because I'm sure that that's not like exactly what we're doing in meditation. But yeah, basically having some kind of like harness over over the mind's machinations. Um, it's great for studying complex topics, keeping in mind that Scorpio is a fixed sign. And there is that sense that with Mercury and Scorpio, we've got the ability to focus in and go deep on a subject, which I really love. It's very, very different energy to the normal um, let's say Mercury in, in Gemini, its own sign, uh, that's the ability to kind of like take in lots of perspectives and think about lots of different things. Mercury in Scorpio is really best put to the task of focusing on, on one specific line of thought or, um, or study. My second theme is conspiratorial thinking. Um, so things like suspicion, paranoia. Of course, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean that they're not out to get you. Uh, there is a sense that uh, with Mercury and Scorpio, it's it's kind of helpful for um, figuring out things that might have been hidden from us, and uh, yeah, discovering truths that uh, that there might have been some kind of deceit around. At the same time, like I said, it's it's it can bridge onto paranoia, suspicion um, that kind of can 
be obsessive at times. So trying to keep a healthy balance on that. Um, but equally, it, like I said, it, it can be it can be helpful. And kind of that fits in nicely with our third theme of healthy scepticism. So that ability to kind of question and um maybe be uh yeah more more doubtful about the kind of facts and information that we're being given um wanting to verify something in a very logical um and factual way at the same time keeping in mind that mercury um that scorpio is a water sign so there's likely going to be some kind of emotional or intuitive or even just an instinctive sense um that we get with mercury and scorpio which isn't necessarily the the logic of an earth sign it's not necessarily well i see the facts i, I see that things aren't like matching up in reality therefore i'm skeptical and um, this is much more of an intuitive i don't know if i trust that i can feel it in my waters that that kind of thing um but like i said this can be a healthy th thing as well my fourth theme is sarcasm cutting wit words that hurt um, it's just something that we might kind of notice in, in certain events during Mercury and Scorpio season. Um, you know, this is the kind of thing that you might see if you were hanging out with friends and somebody's being particularly like sharp and cutting, but it's also quite funny. Uh, that kind of thing. I can see that a lot with Mercury in Mars's signs. It's, it's often words that cut or, um, might, might even come across as a little bit harsh, but also, uh, it can work in the right circumstances. Um, the fifth theme I have here is deep conversations, sharing of secrets and keeping secrets. Uh, this idea that, you know, Scorpio is, is sort of Mars's defensive sign. Um, Aries is more Mars on the attack. It's like the yang active masculine version of Mars. And Scorpio is this more, um, you know, putting the defenses up. It relates to much more what's hidden and, um, what is generally kind of like kept under wraps. So, Mercury there is this kind of like investigator, like I kind of want a, a magnifying glass as a prop now, but it is the detective who, you know, seeks the bottom of, of things. Um, and similarly, you might be encountering information that, as I've been saying, ha has been hidden or it's been um, protected in some way. And now Mercury in Scorpio season is maybe making people a little bit more um you know, both, both secretive, but also willing to kind of like let you in on secrets if you're trustworthy. Scorpio really needs to trust uh, in order to, to share. And my sixth theme is watching scary movies. And that's just a fun one, particularly for Halloween season, uh, spooky season. Bella Lugosi, who played Count Dracula in the 1930s and starred in lots of other horror films, as well as Boris Karloff, who played Frankenstein's monster. They both had Mercury and Scorpio. So these actors who were literally in these kind of foundational um, classic like, horror movies, horror roles, uh, had Mercury and Scorpio, as does uh, Neve Campbell, interestingly, who's kind of like a modern day you know, actress who's been in, in scary movies. So now let's take a look at what the tarot has to say about Mercury and Scorpio season. So we get a feel of um, like the, the subtleties of the different three phases of Mercury going through uh, the sign of Scorpio. So we, we break things up here into decans. There's, there are three decans, uh, 10 degrees each um, in each zodiac sign. And each one of those decans can be corresponded with a, can be co corresponded with, I don't know if that makes sense. It corresponds with a tarot card. So we're looking at the cups because Scorpio is a water sign. And this will be the five, six, and seven of cups. And so let's just start off with the five of cups. That is the Lord of Disappointment. You see in this card, a sad cloaked figure in black. Uh, it's very emo. Three cups have fallen over, two cups remain. This is a card that can speak to mentally coming to terms with a loss of some kind. Something bad's happened and you know we're kind of picking up the pieces. And it really is the necessary grieving that we might need in order to go through something um, difficult but also transformational so it's undergoing this kind of transformation this evolutionary kind of piece that Scorpio season speaks to it comes in the middle of you know autumn in the northern hemisphere and this is kind of where a lot of Scorpio takes its symbolism from um, but again I always think of it as the time where we really start to see things decomposing um, in nature and there is a transformation that's happening as we try and make that big transition between the summer season to the winter season. Mercury and Scorpio can, like I've been saying, dwell on the negative or fixate a little bit too much on, you know, suspicions. Um, if there's a speck of doubt, like the mind can kind of like glom onto it. And while there is a chance 
we'll um, we will be onto something. You know, maybe that is the the secret to the <laughs> the mystery of life or to, to a detective story. Um, the mind can also play tricks on us, and that is just something to keep in mind uh, with one of the darker parts of Mercury and Scorpio, and and that's going to come back in another decade as well. So this that's the initial kind of. Uh, you know, opening 10 degrees of Scorpio, it's like something bad has befallen us and we're kind of take coming to terms with it. In the six of cups, this will be between uh, 10 uh, Scorpio and 20 Scorpio. Um, and this is said to be the Lord of Pleasure. Um, this is the strangely proportioned figures. Um, it's meant to be a boy passing a cup of flowers to a girl um, or a tiny old lady. Uh, but fundamentally, this is a card about memory, maybe even distorted memories, but memories in the past, it's almost like the emotional recollection, not necessarily like the factual recollection of, of events. Um, it's very, it's a very positive looking card. It's kind of like the rose tinted glasses side of memory, um, looking back on, on happier times, perhaps. And something that comes up for me when I think about this, particularly in the Scorpio Deccan, which is ultimately uh, a Deccan that relates to, you know, the death major arcana, uh, and we are thinking about things dying during this season. And one of the things that has kind of been interesting me recently when I've been thinking about death is this idea of how important memory is, um, because, you know, this is how, how somebody does live on. It's through the memories of the people who, who stick around for a while. Um, and often it's less about what somebody did, like, you know, where they worked or, you know, how much money they made. Um, and it's more about those memories that people leave uh, on other people when they when they uh, who are still alive. So, yeah, with Mercury here, I just I do think it could be a time where we are reflecting on the past and um, finding some kind of solace in that, finding some kind of realness and aliveness to what exists in our memories. And it might not be about a person who's died or something, but it, it could be about, um, you know, something that you used to have, a relationship, a job that you loved, a pet, like all different kinds of things that we might, um, that Mercury and Scorpio going through that, that second deck and could, could really be bringing up. Um, and to find some kind of joy in that, or at least a, a kind of, a, you know, a contented meaning, perhaps. The next tarot card we're talking about is the Seven of Cups, or the Lord of Debauch. And this is a card we've talked about in a few videos recently, because we've had quite a lot of action in this third degree of Scorpio, um, third decan of Scorpio. And this is the decan that Venus rules over. The figure stand is standing in front of an array of cups with some with good things in them, some with bad things in them. Um, the idea is, you know, be careful for what you of what you wish for. Um, it speaks to dreams, fantasy, escape through illusion. Um, I think about it as this idea that you know, if if I have this certain thing, this this cup of whatever it is, then all will be well. We know that that is often an illusion. And I think with Mercury going through this decan, I think about how we can be deceived and deceive others, uh, which Venus is actually really good at, coming back to, to this idea that Venus rules this decan. Um, if you think about like art and beauty and optical illusions, if you've ever seen like MC Escher's work, um, you know, that's all like kind of based on this idea of, you know, it, it, it's not quite what, what it seems. Makeup, fashion, these are all kind of how v Venus is used to make something appear completely differently. Um, and there is a somewhat of a deception there. Mercury will also try Neptune during this final phase of its transit through Scorpio. So again, there is even more sense of illusion, deception, you know, things are not all as they appear to be. Um, and just, again, a reminder in, in this in this last bit of the transit, the importance of clarity, of critical thinking, um, which is a really good, helpful thing that Mercury can, can do, especially in Scorpio, um, critical thinking to cut through any smoke and mirrors. Okay, so before I get into the rising sign horoscopes for Mercury in Scorpio season, I just want to remind you that my Kickstarter is still live right now for AstroZine 2024. So for a while, I've been toying with this idea of creating something physical, um, you know, relating to my passion for astrology, but also just as something that people can actually really use uh, YouTube videos, they're, they're so fleeting. We watch them, we consume them, and they're kind of gone. Uh, whereas I like this idea of having a physical zine, and I can show you, this is like the test copy of, of the zine here. Um, you can have it with you 
all year. It's something kind of it's fairly light. You can carry it around in, in your bag, your pocket. Uh, there's a journal section in there as well for each month with different journal prompts. Um, and it's just something to refer back to. Whereas, uh, again, like I said, um, a lot of YouTube videos just kind of come and go and we forget exactly everything that the person has just said to us. Hopefully this is something that will be useful th throughout 2024. I'm also offering a lot of discounted astrological consultations. So if you want to sit one-on-one -on -one with me and get your chart read, um, talk about the upcoming transits for you personally, um, this is a really great opportunity to, to nab one of those and you'll have that opportunity until November 9th. Check it out in the description below and uh, thank you in advance and to everyone who's already supported the Kickstarter. Let's get to the horoscopes. So starting with Mercury in Scorpio in the first house, Mercury's influence will be on you in a very personal way. You'll likely be engaging in more mercurial tasks, so things that involve the mind, the intellect, travel, communication. You also have a greater capacity, capacity during this transit for self-reflection and self-examination. Watch out for overdoing it though, you know, overanalyzing yours or another's behavior, which could lead to a kind of a paranoia. Um, good for intense focused self-reflection. So now moving on to Sag rising with Mercury in the 12th house. So this often reflects a time where our mind is less of a friend and more of an enemy. Pa uh, paranoia, obsession, negative self-talk, fighting with your own mind. These are some of the themes that we could see during this transit. If you struggle with any of that, um, I do have a book recommendation for this transit, and that is The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. kind of helps to take a step back from the mind, which can feel like it's running the show at times. Um, one thing I would say that this transit is good for is self-reflection. Now moving on to Capricorn rising, where Mercury will be transiting your 11th house. Thoughts will be more directed towards how others can help you during this time, as well as how you can help others and be a support. This isn't really a time to focus on doing it all on your own. It's a great time to open up conversations with allies, communities, organizations, and individuals who might help you further your own goals. Watch out for some potentially deceitful behaviors as Mercury is in Mars's home and Mars is also co-present there. And people could be somewhat deceptive. Um, equally, you know, don't let yourself be carried away by paranoid suspicions. Uh, there's a fine line, um, but just know that people could be act acting in kind of like a Machia Machiavellian way during this time. Now let's have a look at Aquarius rising where this transit will be happening in your 10th house. Mercury will be in your house of career, public image, what you're known for, the kind of, uh, again, like the, the face that you show to the, the wider world. You might find yourself being more public in areas of your life, uh, thoughts, solutions, um, sharing something in a meeting at work or getting involved with an aspect of work that, you know, means that you are more public or seen or recognized. So Pisces rising, Mercury is in your ninth house. You might find increased mental focus on your goals around furthering your knowledge, experiencing the world, making plans to do that, digging deep into your spiritual beliefs. It's really great for the pursuit of higher ideals and focused uh, attention. It's not a long transit, so probably not one for really long trips, but you might want to make plans or confirm plans for a long distance trip. Um, it's really good for discussing the big picture topics in life and being very, like I said, focused in your thoughts and in your studies. Now for Aries rising, this is happening in your eighth house. It's a transit that can really reflect dealing with things that you may have been avoiding. Difficult conversations around topics like money, death, debt, taxes, what you owe, what is owed to you. Dealing with difficult issues through mercurial matters. So, you know, dealing with the paperwork of something like inheritance or a divorce, um, taxes, that feeling of just looking up something that you've been putting off for a long time, keeping in mind that this is a house that is um, kind of related to like fear and anxiety of what is to come. Um, but I think Mercury in Mars is sign, especially while Mars is co-present, it's really helpful. It's just really helpful for us facing our fears and just getting that stuff out of the way and getting it done. With Taurus rising, this Mercury transit is happening in your seventh house, the relationship house. And this could be a time where you find yourself getting into some rather deep and possibly dark conversations with a loved one. You might even find yourself in the role of a psychoanalyst or a shaman, you know, as you help a partner or a friend through a difficult time by using your listening and guidance skills. It could also just be a time where you talk about the bigger um, things in a relationship, you know, like what happens if one of you dies and like sorting out uh, wills and things like that. 
Taking a look now at Gemini rising, this transit is going to be in your sixth house. It's a good time for mental focus when it comes to your work, as well as any kind of active service. You're more able during this time to focus your mind on one thing and really get down to the bottom of a problem, whether that is at work or in your personal life. Um, I can see this being a good one for you know people trying to get to the root of like a health issue and find answers for that. There may also be a focus on using your mind to improve a difficult situation, you know, putting the mind to work, engaging in practices like CBT, for example, you know, doing the work that the mind really needs. Now, taking a look at Cancer Rising, this um, is going to be in your fifth house. It's a really fun place for Mercury to be. This is the fun house. It's the house of joy and play. And it's a good one for using your mind for those things, um, for stimulation, for pursuing whatever piques your curiosity. Remember that Mercury is the planet of the trickster, so it may also be a time for pranks and tricks and play. There could be the um, risk of overlooking the needs of others, um, which is kind of unlike a Cancer Rising, but this transit is one that you could see you acting a little bit more out of character, unless you have Mercury there natally. Now taking a look at Leo rising where Mercury will be transiting your fourth house. It's more of an introverted transit for Mercury where your mind will likely be more focused on matters at home, in your private life, amongst close family members. It can also be a great one for research into hidden things as well as digging up or excavating things, you know, like literally or maybe things like old stories from the past, um, forgotten memories, your history or the history of your ancestors as well. Now onto Virgo rising where Mercury will be transiting your third house. There's a lot of mental energy being focused on the everyday here. It's more of a social transit, having more interactions with people close to home, siblings, neighbors, aunts, uncles, anyone in your local community. It's not a super relaxing time mentally. You could feel like life is more fast paced than normal. And like there's a pressure to take in and analyze more information than normal. So um, also just keeping in mind to um, you know, try to find moments of like mental peace and mindfulness during this transit as well. And finally, onto Libra rising, where Mercury will be moving through your second house. So the mind is going to be more focused on what you value during this time, especially physical resources, but also your skills and your gifts. You might find yourself engaging in business dealings or anything related to the marketplace and being more shrewd or wary of others that you deal with. So let's say you're usually somebody who's a bit of a sucker for an offer. You know, you're the victim of salespeople. Uh, you might feel more adept at being more cautious or more canny during this time, you know, with any purchases or agreements. Well, that's all I've got for Mercury in Scorpio season. I hope you found that video helpful, useful, informative, all of the above. Uh, please give me a like if you did enjoy this video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. It really helps me get these little videos out to more people. Um, if you'd like to support the AstroZine Kickstarter and get your hands on a copy of that, uh, you can do that. Just click the link in the description below, I believe. And as always, just thank you very much for watching and have a lovely Mercury and Scorpio season. Mm -hmm.